Thomas, uh, you know, you were my mentee for your first year and a half here at RLC. So I'm really, really happy that you, you asked me to be a part of this, uh, this chat. I couldn't be more thrilled to talk about you. Um, so usually my strategy is I talk about when I first met a student uh, or one of my mentees. And I feel like I met you through Miss Windrum before she spent a summer tutoring you uh, in grade 10, uh, you know, after you had missed some time to catch up on math. And it, you know, she talked about a kid who wasn't super keen on math and who, <laughs> yeah, you're shaking your head. Yes. She was helping me to remind that sometimes you would say things like, okay, like you can go now if you want. And uh, it was, it was an interesting introduction to Thomas because the first day that I actually met him was on day one of semester two in uh, 2019. And it was the, the RLC ski trip. We took the whole school on a bus and we went down to Holiday Valley. And, uh, you know, Thomas, I think I had chatted with your mom a little bit before, not only about uh, you, but also like things that you're gonna be doing at RLC because we're a pretty active school. And no doubt you came to us after having experienced some challenges. And I, I assured your mom, like, I'm, I'm the person to potentially help you out because I've been through some challenges too. And I think I can understand what it means to like still participate despite having some, some limitations. So we went skiing on day one, Thomas, and neither you or I were able to ski. So I was like, let's go up on the, the snow tube hill together. And, you know, I, in my head, I'm going, should I be pushing Thomas to do this or not? And I think of people who pushed me when I maybe didn't think I was totally capable of doing things. And I, I was appreciative of that. So Thomas, I pushed you to go down that hill, not literally pushed you, I like encouraged you to go down the hill. So you jumped on the tube, you went down the hill and I was so happy to see you do it. And at the bottom, as you were leaving, you wiped out on the ice and gave me a heart attack. And I don't even think I tubed down, I ran down full steam. And uh, I was pretty worried that that was your first, your first sort of thing you did here at RLC. Um, I was worried about what mom would say. I was worried about what Mr. B would say. I was worried about what you would say about this guy who's pushing you to go down this hill. Um, and you know, you didn't let it phase you, even though you had to be taken off and go see a doctor. And I think that was an amazing start to my actual impression of you, Thomas. A kid with, with first of all, courage to do things, even though you might be a little apprehensive, but also the ability to bounce back after something bad happens. Um, and to me, that shows your grit and resiliency. And I got to start by saying that right off, off the bat. Um, I don't really need to probably allude too much on that, Thomas. That is something that I admire about you more than you probably realize. And I hope everyone at this school, uh, you know, can appreciate your grit and resiliency for, for taking taking a bad situation or a difficult situation and turning it into something super positive that everybody can learn from. Um, so when I think of you, Thomas, I think of somebody who loves to be active and loves being outside and going on adventures. Um, you know, I remember you in Brock House when I was on duty and they're always been like, what are we doing for weekend activity? We need better weekend activities, right? Like you really set the bar with participation on weekend activities, but also getting kids out to do fun things. I think about our sea kayaking trip. Getting into a sea kayaking trip or into a sea kayak on its own is a difficult task, especially when you've got limited mobility in your leg. And I mean, you were probably one of the first ones in there. You flipped the sea kayak and into cold water, like you, you literally set the tone for the start of that trip. And I think nobody was able to, you know, to not have fun because of your sort of like positivity and your, your ability to just be tenacious and go for it. Um, I've never heard you complain once. And to me, that just says again, so much about your character. Uh, not taking things for granted, I think is another message that you send to everybody here at RLC. Uh, again, Thomas, you are just, you know, I, I wrote almost heroic qualities in you, you know, despite challenges, you show us what it means to persevere. Uh, you know, you took a leadership with me last year, or sorry, in, in semester one. In semester two, Niels uh, chose to choose you as his greatest leader in his mind. And I thought that was probably one of the coolest things to see, you know, one of your best friends get up and talk about how much they admire you. And the fact that it was, you know, to the point 
you know, I think Niels, Niels knows what it takes to be a good leader and he captured your essence perfectly. Uh, Thomas, super, super grateful to have had you in my mentor group, but also to have you as a person to kind of like chat with back and forth, talking about what it means to, you know, be slightly differently abled. And uh, to me, that has meant a lot to, to me as a, as a professional and a teacher uh, working with kids. Um, so yeah, Thomas, super, super stoked that you're, you're here in grade 12 and we're going to get to see you graduate. I don't want to talk too much because Miss Saley's got to go now, so I'm going to pass it on to her. I have a confession to make. I want to be like Ben Thomas when I grew up. Some of you know him more commonly as Thomas and probably just miss the silent Ben that is in front of his name. But irregardless of what you call him, we are all better for having him in our mists. And I mean it that I wanna be like him when I grow up. In the few short years that I've known him, I'm no longer surprised that I keep learning so much from him. Just yesterday, I learned that he was a twin. Like I'm probably the last to know that, but really he is tenacious. Don't tell him that he can't do something and he'll do it tenfold. His positivity, while not bubbling and happy-go-lucky or overly outwardly enthusiastic, exists. And he is no doubt one of the most positive people that I know. He handles the hurdles that life throws at him with poise, determination, and utter tenacity. A friend recently said to me, speaking of when she had adversity in her life, I hate it when people told me that I was strong, like I had any choice in the matter. Her words stuck with me and made me think of Thomas, how strong he is, but he never needs that recognition or affirmation. It just is. He has dealt a situation, he confronts it head on, and he deals one step at a time. His reality, he does it, and he never ever complains. He self-advocates, he is productive and seeking, or sorry, proactive and seeking support when needed. When pushed, he steps up and, and defends himself, but he also listens and is open to feedback. And through it all, there is laughter and steadfastness. Tom is a true and loyal friend. He likes to laugh and joke, but he does not speak ill of others. He looks to understand differences in situations. He is thoughtful about the tasks he takes on and truly works to make himself and the community around him better. Thomas is pragmatic and no nonsense in his outlook. If I can have a mere smidgen of his ability to navigate the adversity and the gumption to push himself like he does and to grow and to learn and to try, I'd be pretty proud of myself. Thomas, you will never cease to astound me with your battle stories as you chuckle about the mishaps, with your drive and your determination, with your quiet kindness and embracing all that the world has to offer. I cannot wait to hear from you in the future years to know what your next crazy adventures are. Thank you for making me smile when I have needed most this, this year and all the other times in between. And thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you, Ms. Saley and Mr. Smith for the great introduction. Hi, everyone. Today, I would like to tell you about my journey, how it led me to ROC, and how my personal brand developed throughout my time here. I would say that my journey to ROC started many years ago. My brother was a student here in 2015. My father and I actually discussed myself starting school here in grade seven. However, this was quickly forgotten about, and I ended up staying at my current school. In spring 2016, when I was in my grade seven year, we got the unfortunate news that my dad had brain cancer. At this point in time, I was unaware of how serious his brain cancer really was. Just over a year later, on May 18th, 2017, he passed away. A month later, I had my grade eight graduation. Then that following morning, little did I know that things would change even more for me. On June 23rd, I went to the doctors and was told that the pain that I had been feeling, been experiencing for months was due to a massive cancerous tumor in my femur most likely an osteosarcoma. I honestly thought it was a bruise from my, brother, my twin brother punching me in the leg all the time. I remember the first question I asked the doctor, is this something that could kill me? For those of you who have not heard of an osteosarcoma, it is the same cancer that Terry Fox had. The next several months were tough. I had four major surgeries that first year. The first one being 18 and a half hours where they removed 21 centimeters of my femur. I also had to go through 16 rounds of chemo with a few medical scares in between. All I wanted was to be able to get back to my normal life 
and see my friends again. Come spring 2018, I was able to go back to school with a light workload, which I was very happy about. However, I definitely struggled to get my work done properly as I had missed over seven months of school that year. When the school year came to a close in June, I was very behind because of my treatments earlier in the year. So my mom contacted RLC to ask if there were any teachers there that could tutor me for the summer while I was staying at my college, which is just five minutes down the lake from here. Miss Windrum stepped up to the plate and tutored me all summer in math and science. And during this time was when she convinced me to join RLC as a student the following year. I realized a change in scenery might be nice. Might be nice. And I've always loved it here in Muskoka. As the start of my high school career was not what I expected it to be. I wanted to reclaim my high school experience. What better place than Muskoka for that? I wanted to join that fall, unfortunately. I, but unfortunately, I had a mishap in my treatment. That being that I had snapped the titanium rod in my leg. They replaced it with a stainless steel one, but I have broken two of those now as well. So I wasn't able to start until January of grade 10. Looking back now, deciding to make the switch to ROC was one of the best decisions, decisions of my life. So thank you, Ms. Sinjum, for convincing me that summer to come here. That first day here in January, I felt out of place and worried about my new surroundings. The people that kept me here at the start were the staff who seemed to care so much about all the students. I eventually made friends with the guys in my house over the coming weeks and months. It wasn't really until the beginning of grade 11 though, where I began to come out of my shell and got closer with more of the students here, especially the people in my house like Griffin and Avery. That was also when I became roommates with Niels and we quickly became best buds. ROC has helped me grow in so many aspects of who I am and who I want to be. I think most of my teachers would agree that over the first semester of my grade 11 year, my academic skills improved drastically. Also, I expanded my horizons by participating in certain areas of student life that I probably would not have ever considered before my time here. Specifically, Mr. Smith, my mentor, helped instill in me a deeper passion for being in the outdoors in his OE classes and on our out trip last year. Sea kayaking in Killarney was something I never imagined I would do, but was one of the coolest experiences I have had at RLC and something I will never forget. Thanks, Mr. Smith, for everything that you have taught me. This year, I got the opportunity to be a part of the prefect team this enabled me to work alongside my peers to help grow and increase student life at RLC. In my media arts class this year, Mr. Snake helped me discover my love for film production and storytelling. It made me consider it as a potential career path. Even if I don't follow it as a career, I think it will become a hobby of mine for life. Thanks, Mr. Snake. I also just wanted to say thanks to Ms. Staley for being a phenomenal mentor this past year. You taught me a lot about leadership and what it means to be a good role model. Last but not least, my house parent, Mr. B. I cannot thank you enough because you have truly been there for me during my time here. As someone I can look up to and go to if I'm ever struggling. I would say that my personal brand has developed a lot over the past several years. From a kid who was very shy, didn't get along with others easily and struggled in school, to someone who's more deeply aware of themselves and the importance of their academics. Especially taking the extra time to work through tough situations and overcome difficult obstacles thrown my way. I'm so thankful for our campus atmosphere, having been able to do things that this past year with regards to COVID that I otherwise would not have been able to at most other places. I have built so many long lasting friendships here, but with fellow students and a lot of the staff, and that is something I will take with me for the rest of my life. I am very glad I took the leap of faith to come here those years back and regain my high school experience. Thanks everyone. Thomas, Ben Thomas. I think everyone said too many nice things about you already, so I'm not gonna say anything. I don't wanna inflate you. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, what an incredible account. Thank you for sharing so extensively. Um, Mr. Smith says, uh, we all wanna learn from you. Uh, what an incredible thing to be able to say about somebody and how true is that? Miss Saley says she wants to be like you when she grows up. Uh, still waiting for that that maturity. Um, but uh, what an amazing compliment that is. Um, both of them said they never heard you complain. And uh, we can all uh, stand alongside them on that one. Thomas, your story does not seem real. How could it be? Furthermore, how can you possibly share it so openly and so extensively? Your strength, just like your journey, is astounding. Thank you for sharing it. I'm so happy that you found support here at Rosso Lake College from your teachers, 
your house parent, the adults in your life, and from your amazing friends. Um, I'm so happy also that you found growth uh, in the out trips, um, in your classes, the way you were pushed, uh, and your prefectship, and your leadership opportunities. Thomas, you uh, have given us so much, not the least of which is an amazing start to a morning. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Mr. Vogt.